bought this beautiful lampwork bead at a bead show, and we thought we've just got to turn that into a pendant. But we realized right away that we can't just take the bead and slide it onto a cord because it would end up sideways. This bead is drilled top to bottom, so it wouldn't sit right. It would be a sideways heart, which would be very weird. So instead, we're going to show you how we can turn this into a pendant using just a simple wrapped loop. We're going to start with um, a head pin. And this head pin is slightly longer than a regular head pin. It's two and a half inches long. And we chose that because this particular bead is long from top to bottom. You might be able to use a regular size head pin for your bead if your bead is shorter than this. What we're going to do is take our head pin and we're going to slide on a bicone bead. We're using just a four millimeter bicone bead at the bottom of our pendant because we need this bead there to stop this heart bead from sliding off. The hole in the bottom is kind of big. I don't know if you can see that that's kind of a big hole. And if we didn't put a stopper bead at the bottom, it would slide right over the head of that head pin. So that's going to hold our bead in place and keep it on the head pin. And then we've got another bicone that we're going to put on the top of our heart. And that's because the heart itself has a little indentation here at the top. And that bicone angle just sit, will sit just perfectly in that little heart so none of our wire will show. So that's our start of our pendant. And now to turn this into a pendant that hangs on a, a cord or something, we're going to make a wrapped loop. And to do that, we've got round nose pliers. And the first thing I'm going to do is press the bead and the end of that head pin up against this, um, the round nose pliers. And that's so that the bead doesn't slide around. I'm taking out the slack there. And I'm going to make a 90 degree bend in that head pin wire, just like that. Then I'm going to reposition my pliers so that the top, or, or so that I'm holding onto the top part of that 90 degree bend with my round nose pliers. And then I'm going to wrap my wire all the way around that top jaw of the round nose pliers at that sort of part way up the, um, the top jaw mark. And that's so that my loop is a little bit bigger so it'll fit over a leather cord. I'm going to reposition to the bottom jaw, put that in that partial loop, and then I'm going to pull my wire around to finish that loop. So you see I've got a loop there. You can see our little loop. Now I'm going to take the round nose pliers and I'm going to grasp across the loop, just like that, and I'm going to pull the tail of that head pin wire around twice. It's kind of like you're pulling it around the neck of that head pin right above the bicone. Then I'm going to take my wire cutters, and these wire cutters have a flush side and an angled side. They're called flush cutters because they've got a flush side, and I'm going to use the flush side against my work. Pretty close to those wraps, but um, I want to make sure I don't cut through my, my head pin entirely. I'm going to hold on to the tail so it doesn't fly across the room too. That can be dangerous. There we go. And if your little end is sticking out, you can see I've got a little bit of a tail sticking out there from where I cut. I'm going to just use my um, chain nose pliers, which are the ones with the flat um, sides, and I'm just going to press that end down a little bit so it doesn't stick out, so it's not pokey. And I can also straighten out my loop if it's a little crooked. And there I've got a beautiful new pendant with a loop on the top ready to slide on a leather cord. Mm -hmm.